Full oh, disclosure, I go easier on him because he is on the board of Nurses for Newborns. He's known as Eric Schmidt, Missouri State Senator. Good morning, Senator Schmidt. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. <laughs> Good morning to you, right. too. That was, a lot, that was a lot to say at 750. Sorry. That actually hurt me, you were saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first let's uh, start with uh, something uh, that is near and dear to my heart. You voted against regulating FanDuel and DraftKings here in the state. How come? Uh, I, thought the ta- I thought it was an overreach. I thought it was an excessive regulations and the tax rate was way too high. I think it's a, uh, it's a burgeoning industry uh, that's catering to a market, and I don't want to see us strangle it out. And also, I think it's unfair to some of the smaller players in that market. So um, I didn't support it. Um, uh, and, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see what the governor does. It did not have veto-proof majority, so uh, the ball's sort of in his court. But he did mention it in his state of the state, so I'm assuming he'll sign it, but I don't know that for a fact. There are a lot of those small mom-and-pop uh, fantasy uh, uh, leagues that are saying that that's going to put us out of business. I believe it. It probably will. And so that was one of the reasons why uh, I didn't support the bill. Yeah, all right. One of the things you did support and you were pushing was uh, you now passed a law banning police departments from having quotas. For tickets? Yeah, we, yeah, that's part of our uh, last year, as you know, we pushed Senate Bill 5, which was historic municipal reform. Uh, it, it lowered the caps for cities as far as what they can get from moving violations, reformed our municipal courts, and provided some standards for cities. The next phase of that this year was two things. One was uh, we made it illegal to have traffic ticket quotas. Um, we saw in cities like Edmondson, where the mayor you know, had written a letter uh, and included in the police chief and the police department and, and all the employees' paychecks, uh, reminding them that they need to write more tickets. And we saw ticket quotas in other cities, too, and it's wrong. And uh, we've all known it sort of existed. Surprisingly, there was nothing illegal about it, and we made sure that we uh, did that this year. The other piece that we did that we've talked about on the show before um, is we included in that cap from Senate Bill 5 non-moving violations now. So the Pagedale example where you have bureaucrats literally roaming neighborhoods looking for mismatched blinds and drapes, those fines are going to be included in that cap. And I think that's a very significant reform. In addition, we lowered the disincorporation threshold. So now, and part of that bill is, instead of having 50% of citizens or voters uh, petition, you only need 25%. And now, instead of 60% to disincorporate, you only need a simple majority. So I think if you look at last year's bill, and these, these reforms we've just talked about, this is some pretty significant change that I think will make our county and the state a better place. Eric Schmidt, you've been on the forefront, and you've been very uh, vocal about your uh, child who has uh, developmental disabilities, and you're proud of a couple of things you got through this session. What did you get through? Well, we added um, a, a lot of resources for services for those individuals um, you know, who are um, on the autism spectrum or dealing with other developmental disabilities. There's going to be a new Mercy Clinic in St. Louis County that will help with that, and that's one thing that we got in the budget. Also, we had to do some cleanup language, but last year we became one of the first states in the country to have, you know, we have a 529 college savings plan. Um, now we have, Missouri's one of the first states to have a savings plan so you can save for the long-term needs of your child with a disability. It's called the Missouri ABLE Act. And so I'm very proud um, to have worked on that because, uh, you know, my family came up for the last day of session. It was my last session as a um as a state senator, I'm very proud of, to be able to serve my county for eight years. But at the end of it, at the heart of it, uh, I'm a dad, and, and my 11-year-old son has had some pretty profound challenges. He's nonverbal, um, has epilepsy, is on the autism spectrum. So I know uh, what it's like for those families to deal with those challenges each and every day. And so it's been part of uh, what I've done up there to fight for those families and fight for those kids. So I'm, I'm proud of the work that we were able to do. One of the criticisms, Eric Schmidt, is that you have been able to fight for your child because you're there. There are many children who don't have that voice because uh, somebody doesn't have an advocate in that room, like a medical marijuana where somebody is can't eat and, and would like to uh, smoke a little marijuana so they could actually get their appetite back. So uh, how, why is it that a medical marijuana can't get through or, or some of these other things in which people are suffering with? Why can't those things get through? Well, I think that you've seen some progress. For example, a couple of years ago, I handled a bill that made CBD oil legal in the state. So, like, CBD oil has very low THC, high CBD oil, uh, or high CBD levels, which has helped um, individuals. Uh, I think, quite frankly, McGraw, the, the medical marijuana um, bill is going to be on the ballot. 
um, this fall, and I think it'll pass. And so I think that there's been some progress on that. And I also think um, there's been a lot of things that we've done to address mental health issues. Um, I mean, we have some record funding for some of those services. So I think it's sort of an untold story. Um, but we've done a lot and worked in a bipartisan way to, to try to address those those issues. How's the campaign going? It's going really well. Uh, we're getting around the state and uh, listening to people. I know you guys, I was listening earlier, you were questioning whether it was treasurer or not. <laughs> but uh, we're getting around the state and, uh, and finding how that office can be more responsive. And, and actually, interestingly, one of the things the office does, in addition to managing the state's 529 college savings plan, it does um, – manage that MoAble Act. So that uh, provides me a, a, a connection, hopefully, past November with, with that community, the special needs community, to try to advocate for them moving forward. Eric Schmidt, you're always welcome here. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, guys. Five, uh, 757 KTRS. One of the safest-